Hello, this is MikeJerry101, and today I'm going to be tearing down and doing a sort of how it works video of this old Panasonic um, AG6200 um, VCR, or actually it's probably a, it says video cassette recorder. So this thing is actually very well built looking, or it looks like it's very well built, um, very heavy. It's got some meters over here for probably sound or something like that. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty nice. So, it's got a nice drum in there. Nice beefy parts. It's not like the newer ones where there's like nothing inside of them. <laughs> Except for like one board. This thing is going to have many circuit boards in there. So, I like these old ones like this. They've got useful components in it. No surface mount junk. So, but yeah, it's got plenty of inputs and outputs on the back here. So, i got to plug it in and see what happens. If it works or not. Because... I don't think I've ever taken apart a VCR that had an electrical problem. It was always belts were broken, or um, something was bent, or a piece of something was jammed in the mechanism, or the only electrical problem I ever, or actually there was two electrical problems that I came across in VCRs, but they were easily fixed. One was that a penny, some, I guess a kid probably stuck a penny inside the VCR and it had shorted out a, um, I believe it was a transistor, and I just took the penny out because it was jammed in there kind of. And um, it worked after I took the penny out. And the other one that I took apart that had an electric problem was the fuse was blown, probably from a lightning strike or something like that, and I replaced the fuse and it worked. So, yeah, mostly mechanical problems with um, VCRs. They're very easy to fix. Um, but, yeah, let's plug it in and put a tape in it and see if it works. All right, so let's see if it does anything else. So I just plugged it in. And let's... Oh, it works. So we've got... Or nice little vacuum display over there, and I don't know if these do anything or not. Probably have to put some sort of a see if the VCR will go in. Oh, I think it's a broken belt. That's what it sounds like. It's trying, but some sort of mechanical problem. Yeah. So probably a broken belt, of some sort. So, let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. Alright, so let's get the cover off. Ah, yes, this is a good VCR. Look at all this stuff in here. This thing is a good one. We've got kind of like rack mount circuit boards over here, although they probably don't plug in. Yeah, they've got wires running in between them. This all looks like the power supply over here. And then we've got the main mechanical bit in the middle here, and this thing is built. Wow. I mean, this thing is really built. So, yeah. Let's give you a closer up. Yeah, you don't see VCRs like this very often. This thing is well built. So, oh, there's actually the, the broken broken belt right there on the motor that um, pulls the tape in. So, that drives all this mechanism here to move the tape. Um, pulls it in and then pushes it down down there so it gets it all lined up and then this motor is the one that moves these mechanisms here to pull the tape around the drum and the drum's actually got some corrosion on it a little bit there which probably isn't that bad it's a little bit polished but I'm not actually going to try and get this thing working although I might just put a belt on here just to see what it does but anyways I just kind of want the parts out of it especially the drum um, because that's really has some really nice bearings in there and as well as the flywheel part for Sterling engines and stuff like that. So, but it also has some very nice electronics in it. So, yes, we've got some nice no surface mount stuff on here. So, pretty excited about that. And then we've got this looks like the power supply back here. And actually, there's the transformer. These things have some interesting transformers in them. It's actually got kind of like it's weird. Looks like it's got the coils kind of wound around this way, around this core and it's laminated it looks like the core is actually kind of wound up it's kind of weird but yeah and then we've got our bridge rectifier diodes here and capacitors and stuff like that so yeah kind of cool um so yeah let's check a belt on there and see all right so i just put another belt on there and it actually seems to do something now although it seems a little bit sad so let's just stuff the tape in there. You have to help this motor along here. It doesn't seem like it's getting enough power. And then I think 
that's this motor that's getting very angry there. Sounds like it needs some oil. Yeah, it sounds really bad. <laughs> it's it knows that something's wrong. It keeps putting the tape back out. But, yeah, it seems a little sluggish. I think this motor here might be worn out, or it's not getting enough power. So. See how then when th that goes in, you have to spin this motor a little bit here and then it makes bad sounds. So, I don't know what's wrong with it. So, yeah. Not too happy. So, let's just tear it apart. Not going to waste any more time fixing it. So, yeah. Alright, so i just starting to take it apart here. And just pointing out how neat it is. I mean, like it... I mean, it would have taken a lot of work to build all this, but I mean, everything is all wired or tied together with, I don't know how they would have tied those, but it's little knots of um, clear string stuff and zip ties and everything. So everything's all bundled together. It's very organized. Well, but I mean, there's a lot of wire, so it looks very, very messy, but there's a lot of wire there to connect up. And there's all these metal bits that hold everything together. And then this, all this wire loom here, it's going to have a huge wire loom. And connects to this board. This one actually has a supercapacitor on it. Well, a very early supercapacitor. And it's 0.043 farads, which is not bad. So it's very small, but... So, and then there's actually some relays on this board. But, yeah. No surface mount stuff, so that's good. Some... Some sort of transistors down there. And, um, yeah. Alright, so here's all the best bits. So we've got our nice pile of circuit boards there, and that's a nice pile. And then we've got our main uh, mechanical assembly here. And then we've got our transformer and power um, power supply. And I'm actually, when I saw this power supply, I realized that I've actually taken apart an identical VCR before. And that's this power supply here. I have two of these now, so kind of cool. But these are some kind of neat transformers. I'll have to pop one of those open for you so you can see what it looks like inside. But it's got a dial there, um, to, or the, a switch to change taps, so you can do different voltages. And then we've got our output here, which it's got some bridge rectifier diodes there, and some um, fuses. And these look like, I think these are, yeah, those are transistors, because they're marked ECB. And then, I'm not sure what that is, KAG, I think. That might be a um, MOSFET cathode, anode, and um, gate, I suppose that's what that would be, not sure. Um, but yeah, so I have two of these. And then actually after I dug into it a little bit more, I realized that the um, motor on here, right there, that is an awesome motor, guys. If you find a VCR like this, take it apart. This is an awesome motor. Um, that's actually the motor that I use on my um, Sterling engine for a generator exact same motor so this came from another VCR exactly the same as this so kinda cool so now that I have two of those motors exactly the same I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect them up connect the shafts together and then I will um, power one up with a couple of volts and use the other one as a generator and then I'll be able to measure how much watts I'm putting into it and how much is coming out and I'll be able to figure out the efficiency of these motors. So by just dividing it in half, then I'll know how efficient each one is approximately. I mean, they're probably not going to be exactly the same efficient at being a motor and being a generator, but I'm going to see approximately how efficient they are. So that'll be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, these have some pretty nice stuff in them. So we've got this motor here. I believe that actually drives the... Um, yes, so that motor, this motor here, the one that's on this board here, um, spins this little shaft right here, which spins this thing with a broken rubber piece on there. And that, depending on the motor 
on the direction of this motor, it will actually flip over here or over here and actually wind up the tape. So that's what that motor does. And then we've got another motor right here. This motor, it looks like it would have run a belt that would have went to here, and then another belt that was on here that went drove this here, so it would be a big belt there, and then another belt that would go from here to here. And this looks probably like it would have driven the um, mechanism that pulls this in and out, so it pulls the, these um, arms here around the drum with the tape on it. And then we've got another motor right there, this motor. And that motor looks like it actually would wind the tape. So, um, against this uh, pinch bearing or pinch roller. Um, so that's what that would do. So that actually gets our speed of the tape going. Um, and then we have, where did I put the other motor? Somewhere around here. Oh, it's probably under here somewhere. Um, there's another motor right here that actually drives the mechanism that pushes the tape this way and then slams it down onto the um, actual drive stuff. So, so yeah, it has quite a few bits of rubber that kind of um, disintegrated, like this piece here. And then there's a bunch of belt pieces that were all in there. So it probably would have worked if it didn't have all those belts that went bad. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, here's the boards. Here's the, the main control panel. And actually,